Lava Beds is unlike any place I've ever been. I don't know anywhere that has the layers that this park does. It's like being on another planet. The volcanic formations are really striking. They're really obvious when you drive into the park. You see cinder cones and spatter cones and lava flows. We're kind of on the eastern edge of the Cascades, on top of the largest volcano in the Cascades range, the Medicine Lake Volcano. So we have almost 800 lava tubes here at Lava Beds, which is more than anywhere else in North America. Yeah, there's places where you can walk off trail and suddenly you get to this big pit and you're looking down 50 feet into the ground and you would never have known it had you stopped 100 feet back from where you were. It's really cool how much stuff is hidden underground or even on the surface that you wouldn't see normally. It's the sense of adventure, of exploration, of being a place that you've not been before. On any given day, you can walk around the other side of a tree and there's a cave that you've never seen before and maybe the park doesn't even know about. Some of them are huge, some of them are small. Some of them have lots of breakdown, so the original passage isn't there anymore, and there's lots of big boulders on the floor. Some of them have almost no breakdown, so the original passage is intact, which means that you can see all the flow patterns in the floor and the walls and the ceiling. Some caves create microclimates where it almost looks like you're on the coast in a much wetter area because there are ferns and even Pacific tree frogs live in them. And a few of our caves have ice. Very few of them have ice like Crystal Cave does, though. In lava beds out of 800 some odd caves, there are about 20 that have regular depositions of ice in them. Just the nature of the entrance and the multi-level aspect of this cave allows cold air to sink in and get trapped. I would never expect Crystal Life Cave to be in a place like this. You know, you walk down into a trench and find a hole through the rocks, and then it opens up and you see huge ice formations, and it's really cold. Who would ever think that existed below a hot, dry landscape? What I'm doing is taking the annual measurement from a predetermined spot where we have put in these stainless steel screws and we take a measurement to the ice surface and in this particular cave we have five places that we measure. We've seen migration of ice down through the caves to where the upper levels no longer have this, the year-round ice that we see here. These bottom two levels have most of the ice in the cave now. Things are changing on the surface. And as they change on the surface, the underground is also impacted. And the bottom line is that things are changing inside of Crystal Ice Cave. That change is disturbing because these ice caves, they are the water source for many of the critters that live here in the park. It's a desert, so there's no water on the surface. And wildlife depend on those in-cave water sources that melt in the summertime as a source of water when it gets really hot and dry. When we find these areas, we put up a wildlife camera. We see bears and mountain lions and bobcats, foxes, all kinds of birds. All wildlife needs water. And if you can't move far enough to get it from other sources, then you have to go underground. In addition to wildlife, the water found inside of caves was also used by Native Americans, looking for a source of water in the dry landscape. Hey everybody, welcome to Lava Beds. I'll be leading you through Crystal Cave today. My name's Jesse. Um, there's a couple things we're gonna need to do to stay safe while we're in the cave and to keep the cave safe 
from us. Lots of features in the cave are pretty fragile. The ice is pretty sensitive, and there's also thousands of year old cave features that will never regrow if they're damaged. So be extra cautious when we're walking through the cave. In the past, tours used to be a lot larger. Sometimes 40 people would be in here at the same time. And we noticed huge temperature spikes during those tours. And we also noticed that the ice was beginning to melt. Visitors impact the cave by raising the temperature. Their body heat at 98 degrees is much warmer than the cave temperature around 32 degrees. And so when you bring in a bunch of heat to the cave, your radiant body heat heats up the passage, which means you're heating up the ice and allowing it to melt. If it's six people or fewer, the hope is that we won't increase that temperature so much. And that's why the tour is so limited now, is because even though the ice is already starting to melt from the upper levels, we want to slow that process down as much as we can by limiting those tours. So most of our visitors won't get the chance to see Crystal Ice Cave. But there's so many other opportunities for exploration here. There are dozens of caves for people to visit at Lava Beds. Here you can just explore on your own. You have to bring your own lights and helmets and gloves and knee pads and whatever you feel you need to be safe. And that sense of adventure, I think, leads a lot of people here. And Lava Beds is a special park for that reason. One of the most frequent comments I hear at the visitor center is, well, we'll have to start planning our return trip because we just didn't see enough. And a lot of times people are surprised by just how much Lava Beds has to offer. People visit, they come to see the volcanic environment and underground. They come to see the high desert and they come to see the night sky. So I think the people that come here are interested in a new place to explore.